Hello and welcome back to another exciting episode of On Board with Cruise Passenger, brought to you once again by our friends at Region 7 Seas. I'm Peter Lynch, publisher of Cruise and Travel Magazine and cruisepassenger.com.au. And I'm Bernadette Chua, the content editor of Cruise and Travel Magazine. And today we're going to be talking about some very select tours hosted by one of the travel world's influencer superstars. Now, Brett Dudley has been in the travel industry for 25 years and runs two companies. He certainly has. Here's what his own website says about Brett. I've travelled on private jets, commercial in all classes, private yachts. With the experience behind me, I feel I'm more than qualified to be the luxury influencer. Now, we've heard a whole bunch of stories from Brett as well, so I feel like I could definitely trust Brett. Absolutely. <laughs> He's an accomplished photographer on top of all of that, by the well, way. I mean, what can't he do, really? <laughs> and you can see his pictures on brettdudley.com. <laughs> Welcome, Brett. Thank, Thank you, you so much Thanks, for being buddy. with us. Thank you. So now tell us, I mean, you know, you've gone through some pretty amazing things in your life. Um, and, you know, what are some of the, I guess, some of the highlights that you've experienced in your time in the travel industry? Yeah, well, you're, you're right. And anyway, <laughs> thanks for having me today. <laughs> I have uh, I have experienced um, some amazing things and highlights. Mm. Uh, 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 there's so many to tell. We could probably st spend a few hours talking about them. I'm to be sure honest we with will. You. <laughs> um, but trying to uh, reconcile a few highlights. I mean, going to Royal Ascot. Mm. Um, we took a um, so we had a one of the travel companies we had was Latitude 33, um, and the name derived from three of my favourite cities, which is Santiago, Sydney, and oh, Cape Town, oh, which are all 33 south of the equator. Yes, yeah. And uh, so yeah, so we we took uh, we took a group of people to Royal Ascot. Mm. to the horse races. Amazing. Did yeah. you wear a top hat? Yeah. Well, you have to. If of you, course. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and did you pick a winner? I didn't. No. Oh, but we saw mind. the Queen uh, oh, when excellent. we were there. So that was in uh, 2018 yep. um, when she was obviously still alive. And uh, yeah, so that that was quite a great experience. You know, I think um, South America, uh, I've been to quite a, a lot. Mm. And, um, you know, going to, hiking in Patagonia and Torres del Paine, uh, going to the Atacama Desert, which is one of the driest places on the planet. Um, Machu Picchu, obviously. I think one of the things, because uh, people always ask me, what's my favourite place? Mm. Uh, one of the one of the real highlights for me, which is a bit abstract, is um, is Easter Island. Mm. Easter Island. And uh, in fact, I spent best part of ten nights there. Um, so that's uh, that's quite an amazing place. Yeah. Very difficult to get to. Yep. Um, but yeah, I've been there twice, and uh, so that's. That's one of my favourite places. Most people think of Easter Island, they just think of the statues. Mm. The Moais, yeah. And people say, you know, what did, what did you do there for so long? Yeah. Well, that's exactly um, what I was going to ask. Yeah, I was going to Well, um, <laughs> behind well I did all statues, the highlight stuff. I was just like, behind the statues, there's a riveting nightlife. No, there's not, actually. <laughs> <laughs> there's only two roads. Mm. Um, in fact, uh, I rode a horse. The second time I went there, I rode a horse with a guide mm. and couldn't speak a word of English. And, uh, you know, my Spanish is, is not great. It's okay. You know, I yep. can get around. Can't get by. Yeah. I can get by. You know, I can ask for some, for some food, ask for a bill, all that sort of stuff. Mm. Anyway, I rode a horse um, from the little town mm. um, all the way up to the highest point wow. uh, on the island, which was best part of a day. Mm. Uh, so, you know, we're galloping up these hills and down. And so <laughs> With a guide you couldn't talk to. A guide I couldn't talk to. <laughs> but just holding on for dear life, We laughed right? a lot, yeah. <laughs> um uh, you know, yeah, like I hiked uh, 26 kilometres from the town across to the, the only beach where um, Captain Cook actually came into Easter Island. It's the actually only beach. Mm. Uh, so it's only like 22 kilometres around. Yeah. But it's – um, and it has this massive uh, crater where a meteorite hit it. And, um, yeah, and so it's quite spectacular. So – and it's it's kind of a it's a bit like for me it's a bit like the Arctic or the Antarctic. Mm. It's a place to um, escape the world. And sort of cleanse the mind, body, and spirit. Yeah. And uh, so all you can hear is the the wind, oh. and uh, it's quite a spiritual place because the, you know, the the local people believe that these Moais actually, you know, the un, although they've they've said that you know they rolled them on, they moved them on, you know, coconut trees, yeah. or, the, yes. or they walked them and all that stuff. They they actually believe 
um, in what they call mana, which they actually believe they moved themselves. Yeah. So well, it's, naturally, um, of course, it's just when we're asleep, right? Yeah. They've had very big legs. <laughs> so, yeah. So anyway, so it's it's a very interesting place. Mm. So, you, you know, it's a place to sort of go if you're interested in, you know, nature and all that sort of stuff. But so we're, it's... we're really here to talk about traveling with Brett Dudley. So, <laughs> so traveling with Brett Dudley is really all about these fabulous stories, the mm. places you've been to and how traveling with you brings those anecdotes to life. Well, because yeah. you've seen so much of these areas. Well, it is. And, you know, I've, I've been, you know, like I, st well, I started the, um, you know, the first travel cruise travel company in Australia in 2000. And it wasn't just a cruise travel company. We also chartered coaches in Europe in 2005. We chartered, um, a 737 in South Africa in 2009 and moved, you know, 120 people around and took out five game parks. And wow. So, um, you know, we chartered ships. We chartered, you know, Orion in 2009. We chartered ships in the Galapagos and, you know, we've done a lot of things. And so I've been to a lot of the places. I hosted some of these trips. I didn't host all of them. Mm. Um, you know, we had professional tour hosts uh, that went along. But sometimes, you know, like we chartered um, Robus Rail mm. wow. um, for 50 people. My yeah. gosh. Yeah. For... Well, just rowing back to the Orion, though, you yeah. also had a couple of special mm. guests on that voyage. We did, and they were paying passengers actually. <laughs> um, funnily enough, um, but yeah, we had Bob and uh, Bob Hawke and, and Blanche on that, mm. and eight of their friends yep. um, nice. came along. We had a hundred people on board, mm. and um, he he was, you know, he is just like a normal guy, you know. And uh, he sat down with me one day on deck after a couple of days. I kind of left them alone, you know, and um, had a couple of beers, of course. Naturally, of course, naturally, with Bob. Bob. And um, <laughs> he said, you know, if you want me to have, do a talk on the ship, uh, you know, I'll do it for you. So he actually, really? yeah, he told some amazing stories in his recollection. Yeah. You could hear a pin drop. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we went out to, um, so when one of the parts of the itinerary, we went, we went to, um, Wyndham and mm. went into Kununurra and we chartered pretty well every helicopter and light plane in existence <laughs> gosh. And, gosh. and, uh, for the hundred people. Yeah. So we offered two shore excursions. One was to, um, Argyle Diamond Mine mm. and one was to the Bungle Bungles. Yep. So Bob and Blanche and his friends wanted to go to the Bungle Bungle. So, you know, I went out there and, uh, to, you know, he, well, we all walked out to this canyon, mm -hmm. had lunch and it was hot and yep. walked back and, uh, we get, but it's about two o'clock in the afternoon and, uh, we get back on the little buses to go to the airstrip mm. and, uh, Bob comes up to me on the bus <laughs> and he says, um, you know, Brett, he said, You've given us ice creams in the Hunter River. Mm. You've given us champagne in King George's Falls. You've given us cocktails on this island near Montgomery Reef. Surely you could get me a beer out here. <laughs> of course, here. <laughs> naturally. <laughs> so I thought, um, yeah, leave it with me, Bob. So anyway, I go, I go up to the, I go up to the driver, and uh, I said to him, "So uh, we're going to the airstrip now." He goes, "No, we're going to have afternoon tea." And I said, "Well, look, I really need." You must have beer there. Right? <laughs> I really need a beer for I Bob. I need Hawk. a beer for Bob, right? Yeah. And he goes, "Oh well, you know, the the license doesn't start till five o'clock." And I said, "But we're in the middle of nowhere, right?" <laughs> so I said, "Look, when we get there, um, you introduce me to the uh, to the manager, mm. and I'll I'll sort it out." So um, he radios ahead. And sure enough, the manager's waiting for us, and everyone gets off the bus. They go inside, and uh, they are making their cups of tea and stuff. And I said, "Look, I understand your license doesn't start at five, but you know." No one's around here. Yeah. And I said, look, here's a hundred bucks, sort it out, right? <laughs> Get some beer for me. So he said, all right. He said, look, come down there in five minutes and there'll be some beer waiting for you. I said, right, okay. Yes. So I go inside, sidle up, Nick, Bob's making his cup of tea and I look at him, he looks at me. He, we didn't speak any words and I basically just said, follow me. <laughs> so he puts his tea down. We go outside and uh, we walk down to this place and here's this, you know, big esky full of beer and ice and some of the staff and Bob goes, you bloody beauty. <laughs> well, I mean, Brett, you are a great fixer then. <laughs> that is fantastic. So, so he, he knocks the top off this beer and by the time I reckon I've even cracked it, he's finished the first one. Oh, and uh, anyway, we get back on, we drank a few beers and, and you know, he told stories to the staff mm. and it was very fun. And um, we got back on the ship that night and uh, one of his friends came up to me and said, Brett, you're in big trouble. Uh -oh. I said, why? He said, because Bob thinks you can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they actually came to the, we chartered a ship in the Galapagos mm. and they came uh, on that. To, oh, so you've sailed with Bob Yeah, twice. I've spent quite a bit of yeah. time with him. Yeah. And uh, so they came on that. Uh, that was a couple of years later. Mm. Anyway, we get on the ship out in the Galapagos 
and we're about to sort of leave port and Bob comes up and he goes, oh, I've got a big problem. I said, what's that? And he goes, Blanche has left the sand shoes in the hotel uh, in Quito and I don't think I've got enough cigars to, <laughs> to, oh, to, to last me for the cruise. Oh, okay. <laughs> So I find the guy that's run the ship. I said, look, a big problem. You need to get back on one of those Zodiacs, go yeah. back into town and find a pair of sand shoes this size. And, and a box and of a Cubans. box of Cuban cigars. Oh, <laughs> so to his credit, he came back about two hours later. We had to leave late. And uh, he said, you know, that's three, it's going to cost you 300 US. I said, oh, I just gave you the That's money. not bad though. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't charge Bob. Anyway, Bob, yeah, Bob thought that was pretty good. But anyway, so yeah, so I, I have done a lot of different things like that. Sounds that, to me like traveling with you is going to be a bundle of laughs. <laughs> but so, I guess if you want to do Brett the Fixer kind of holidays, then you've got every kind of opportunity to do it with Regent, don't you? <laughs> Absolutely. So, I mean, let's talk about these uh, these three very special, sure. in fact, four now, I mm. think, yeah. um, four very special select journeys um, traveling with Brett Dudley. Um, uh, so one has done so well, I understand that there are only two cabins left. Yeah. And I think as of now, I think there's only one. Only one? Oh. Yeah. So that yeah, they went, they went, um, buying it just before we came on it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did the road show with, uh, with Regent and, um, yeah, I th that really helped, mm. uh, but introducing myself to the audiences and telling people a bit about myself. Well, so, and yeah. telling these amazing stories as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. So we'll be giving de full details of these tours a little later on. So and listen up and prepare to hit the phones because obviously they're going fast. But how did all of this come about, Brett? Mm. Your, your links with Regent Seven Seas, an unrivaled experience, as they say. Mm. Yeah. And, and of course uh, the well, world's most came about, Well, I, I, I sold my companies in, uh, in February twenty. Yeah, and uh, I still ran them for um, about eighteen months, mm. and I'd obviously worked with Regent, you know, mm. uh, over the years, and had travelled on Regent, which I'll tell you about, and um, and then uh, last year Re Lisa rang me, mm. uh, senior vice president Lisa Pyle, and uh, asked me if I was in town to have a meeting, and uh, we had a chat. And she goes, "Look, I got this idea. Um, it's never been done before." Mm. Would you be interested in hosting um, some small groups uh, on our ships? Mm. And so I was quite delighted, and um, mm. I said, "Yeah, sure. How's it going to work?" Yeah. And uh, so we we kind of limited it to twenty people, and uh, I'm more like a uh, personal concierge. Oh, well, so you're, no. you're going to get me the cigars, right? Yes, I'm exactly. Get, and your sandwiches, <laughs> Please, and a beer I, if you want one. I would love a beer too, <laughs> <laughs> and a private jet. I'll tell you about that one. And uh, so yeah, so it's kind of limited to a small group of people, mm. and there's sort of no set itinerary. We we basically like the first one, we're having a pre-cruise dinner in, in Rio yep. um, to get everyone to know each other. I've been actually in communication with the with the people um, already and all their travel advisors and helping them with their pre and sort of post ideas because okay, I've, I've great. been here so many times. Yeah. So yeah, so that's um, that's kind of how it started. So they get to know each other before you start and, that's and right. you can put the right people together. That's right. That's yeah. a really first class idea, I've got to say, because it breaks all the ice. Um, you know, when you go on a cruise, you desperately try and find some like-minded people you can travel with. Yes. Well, so the, you've actually yeah. done all of that. Well, I guess the other thing that, you know, we were talking about prior to the podcast, you know, you would mention that for certain areas, like some of these particular itineraries, like in South America and South Africa and places like Namibia, people, there is still a little bit of hesitancy about, you know, exploring these areas yes. on your own. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. And I think that's, that's what being one of the great selling points and take ups, uh, like talking to people at the, at the road shows and things is that they, you know, they want to, they feel that sort of security. So they've already got that on the ship, mm. but I can actually enhance, hopefully enhance their trip even more for them. Yeah. yeah. And especially if you, you've been to somewhere where you're going to somewhere like South America that you've never been before, it's a big country. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. and if I can sort of help them enhance their experience. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what it's about, really. Yeah. And, and you get $400 US. On board credit. Shipboard mm. on board credit. Yeah, which you can spend, you know, in this, because there's not much to spend on board, really, because everything's included. That's right. Yeah. Obviously, you know, all your meals and wines and even, a, um, obviously, uh, even laundry. Yep. Mm. Daily laundry, which is a big thing. We're so you very, don't have to pack too many bags, uh, yeah. which is, you know, that's that's a big bonus, actually. Yeah. Mm. Um, or you can use them for additional shore excursions and things as well. Yeah. And of course, the ships um, for your tours are brilliant ships. And Regent Seven Seas 
you know, one of them I think is one of their new set, and mm. all of them have been refurbished. Splendor, yeah, which mm. is Splendor the is most fantastic. luxurious ship in the world. Mm. I know it well. I was there at the launch. <laughs> 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 they are amazing, and life on board Regent uh, Seven Seas ships is very different, as yes. you said. Mm. Yes, everything's included, yes. and that makes it a really, really pleasant yeah. way of doing business. You yeah. don't have to get your wallet out at all while you're traveling. Yeah, um, but also the service is really impeccable. It is, and actually, my first experience um, with Regent was in Sydney on Seven Seas Voyager yep. and uh, when it was a relatively new ship mm. and uh, we were, my wife and I were cruising on it and um, we, we got our tickets and we went down to Sydney on the Saturday. The ship was overnighting mm. yep. and uh, they said, oh, Mr. Dudley, I'm sorry, but you're, um, you're not supposed to board till tomorrow. <laughs> Um, oh, gosh, the, the, date, the, the dates were in America and, you know, they were around the wrong way. But anyway, I read them wrong, my fault. And uh, she said, but look, that's okay. Um, come on and have some mm. lunch and, uh, you know, out on the deck there and uh, we'll see what we can do. And uh, so we left our bags there and uh, she came and found us and said, look, Mr. Dudley, the good thing is, is that the suite that you were allocated is actually available and it's mm. clean. Excellent. And uh, we'd like to, you to come on the extra night with our compliments. Oh, that's Fabulous. so lovely. And that was my first experience with Regent. And, you know, yeah. you always remember those little things. Yeah. So you talk about yeah. service and stuff. I mean, yeah. they could have told me, I'm sorry, Mr. Dudley, but you'll have to come back tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so I've never forgot that. You're so right. And, of course, uh, Regent Seven Seas ships have amazing food, um, specialty restaurants. Yes. Mm. Um, and, and facilities, art. Um, they they really are very very special. Even the ships. dinner plates. Yeah, I'll Versace oh dinner God. plates. <laughs> <They're> beautiful. <laughs> I've got one at home. Oh you, no, 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 I didn't steal no, it. No, I was about to say Peter's got the whole set that he sneaked in his no, backpack. No, we weren't supposed to talk about that. <laughs> no, it was a gift. But I, yeah, I've actually they they are they are beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Now Amazing. let's talk about the first itinerary, this Antarctic Peninsula voyage, which yes. departs from Rio on the twenty sixth of January, twenty twenty four. Now yes. tell us some little insights about Rio and you know, some of the things that you're going to do with the guests. Well, we, we're going to take them out to dinner. Mm. Um, I won't say which. We're taking a surprise Oh, so we're – okay, we'll leave I'm it actually still – I'm still organising <laughs> it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I've been actually organising that this week. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to take them to uh, a cool restaurant. Mm. And then um, as we head down the coast, uh, one of the ports is Buenos Aires, mm. where the ship overnights. Yes. And then I'm also going to organise, for those who want to come, a dinner off ship oh. um, at a restaurant in Buenos Aires. It's, it's very famous, but mm. um, it's very difficult to get into. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, so I'm going to um, organise that for them as well. See, this is another example of why, Brett, you are the fixer. You oh. are the man to know, really. <laughs> and will there be any tango with that? Well, there should be a bit of tango, for mm. sure. Um, I've, I've, done, I've done the tango show, uh, and it's fantastic. So, mm. yeah, we're, we're, we're going to be organising that as well. I must say, I still I was in uh, Buenos Aires in November, and I still remember going to a tango club. Uh, it was the most amazing experience. Mm. We had a great steak dinner, but then for four hours, there was a band of five and about 12 dancers. Aren't they amazing? Absolutely. Oh, wow. I love watching them. But Absolutely you know, the other amazing. thing is too, is that you can go to, which I, I wanted to take the people to if they if they wanted to come, there's some sort of outlying areas mm. with these little like cafes. Yes. 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 And the dancers are actually in the middle of the cafe. On the streets. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's amazing. amazing. Yeah. And oh. they're so talented. Oh, yeah. It just really is in their blood. So it's a real pleasure to see. So how and good I, are you at the tango now, Brett? Uh, <laughs> I actually did... Um, my sister was a ballroom dance instructor. Oh, was she? Yeah. And uh, so I, I actually did my three medals when I was uh, younger. Really? Yeah. My... How strictly ballroom of you? Well, <laughs> so I was pretty handy at weddings. Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, you'll be handy. Tango, on... <laughs> I, I was okay at but You'll uh... be handy on this, um, on this itinerary as well. <laughs> so, uh, and after that, where will people go? Mm. Uh, on the on the ship on the on the ship yeah well it's uh, heads down the east coast mm. um, I don't know all the ports off the top of my head but I know we do stay in, uh, stop at the southernmost city in the world which is Ushuaia mm. yes which is a beautiful city I think you've probably yes, been I there have. Mm. yeah and the museums and you know all those sorts of things there and then we head off to the Falkland Islands. Mm. Um, which is actually not usually on a lot of the itineraries. Yeah, that's what I thought was quite quite different about yes. this mm. particular voyage. In fact, I've, I haven't been there. So I'm. Uh, oh my gosh, there's a place that you haven't been to, Brad. I know, <laughs> it's one of them. Um, in fact, we actually have someone in our group mm. um, that I met at one of the road shows that mm. actually worked on the island uh, for 30 years in one of the uh, base, uh, naval bases. Oh, wow. So um, 
I've asked him to sort of help us out a little bit there. Yeah. So that's, that's, he's part of our group. So that's yeah. thing. And then we, then we're off to, uh, the Antarctica, mm. uh, for five days scenic cruising, which is, it's actually great. Cause you know, for, especially for people that might find it difficult getting in and out of mm. Zodiacs and mud yes. rooms and all that. And yeah. I know like putting all your gear on, getting in the Zodiac, taking it all off again, yeah. all those sorts of things, um, which is good. But I've also done scenic cruising, uh, like in the Arctic and things and sort of being out, you know, you, you rug up yeah. and, uh, go out on deck and just, you know, watch it drive by all the beautiful yeah, I, icebergs. I, I, and I guess and, the other thing as well is that you really get to experience a beautiful ship in a, I guess, contrasting, you know, Well, you can sit on your balcony yeah. if you want. Mm, yep. Imagine that. Yeah. So you're in the Antarctica sitting on your balcony and they'll, you know, they'll turn around and, and there's usually things on both sides. Yeah. Or you could sit up on uh, up in the veranda restaurant, which mm. is indoor-outdoor, and have lunch. I like I've done that in the Arctic. Sit outside mm. with yep. all rugged up, yeah. eating, eating food and Off your cruising Versace past plates. the uh... <laughs> and the wildlife comes to you because uh, yes. when I was there in November, um, literally shoals of penguins were coming up to the ship. Mm. We saw whales, um, we saw leopard seals. Um, so and and we had great fun yeah. um, bird watching in the afternoons. Yes, yeah. because as the ship sails, the birds were at actually coming up to see what was going on. Um, Peter, how many loaves of bread did you have in your yeah, pockets? Yeah, okay. <laughs> but let's not but, let's not forget the um the stars at night time. Mm. Of course. And uh you know, well we won't see the northern lights, we might see the southern lights. Yes. But um being at, being out there in the serenity is uh, is beautiful. Yeah. And you yeah. do actually get to see the penguins. Mm. The um the penguins when we were there were just building their nests. Yes. So those penguin highways you could see and mm. and and literally everywhere there were penguin colonies. Mm. So there was plenty of wildlife to see. Yeah. And I, look, there's always something happening. Yeah. Exactly. You know? yeah. yeah. So true. So true. Yes. Now with the second departure, the South America and Great White, which leaves Buenos Aires um, on the 12th of February, 2025, um, also on the Splendor. But now this also includes three nights of a – pre-cruise land program as well as, or a three free night authentic Buenos Aires post-cruise land program. Or it's, more it's interesting, fan, perhaps. It's fantastic value. The yeah. Chilean, I mean, I think it's $17,000. Sounds fantastic. Mm. On, on the most luxurious cruise ship in the world from yeah. Santiago to Buenos Aires. Now, yeah. you also have some really good insights on, you know, where to stay and some of the restaurants, yes. you know. So what are some of your top recommendations for these areas? Well, um, I mean, I love uh, the wineries, uh, are very close mm. uh, to Santiago, mm. and uh, they're basically in between Valparaiso. Yeah, and uh, so Valparaiso is like an hour twenty away. Yes, uh, yeah. from Santiago, mm. and uh, so that's a good day trip mm. uh, to Valparaiso. And I think that's another thing people forget actually how close the vineyards are. Really. So the yeah. three night Chilean wonders and wine pre cruise tour would take in all of those. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And then if people wanted to um, do other things, they wanted to go a bit earlier as well, mm. yeah. um, then, you know, I could also suggest a, an itinerary up to Machu Picchu because, mm. um, you know, oh, it's fantastic. not it's not a long flight from Santiago yeah. to yeah. Lima. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's, you could do that in four days. Uh, so you, people could take that on as well. Well, I've got a funny story about Machu Because I did pick this itinerary. Yeah. <laughs> I picked these itineraries for a reason. I, because I, I know the, the, I know the, I've spent, mm. I spent, I worked out, I spent best part of a month in Santiago. Mm. So I know a lot of the great restaurants and yeah. hotels and, you know, places to go and see and all those sorts of things. So yeah. Where to go, where not to go. Yeah. There's always the not to go places. But Santiago is a beautiful city. It's mm. awesome. Yeah. It's surrounded by the Andes Mountains. Exactly. exactly it's, yeah. yeah. And I, it's I, very I, cosmopolitan. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And yeah, the, the food and wine is, I mean, the, so, you know, they have a, um, a, a Carmen Air, um, that's, you know, mainly just found in, uh, well, it was from France, mm. but they only realized it 20 odd years ago that it was Carmen Air. They put it, they put this Cab Sav into a, um, a wine judging mm. thinking oh, it was Cab really? Sav and this, oh, fr gosh. this French wine taster <laughs> said, well, that's not, no, this, I think, I think this is Carmen Air. So Ca Carmen Air is a beautiful wine and yeah. quite good. So the, and the wines are a great value as yeah. well in the Casablanca they're, Valley. And they're fabulous. It's yeah. just like, it's extraordinary, isn't it? That a lot of people took a long time to discover, for instance, Portuguese wine, because mm. it was in the shadow of yes. Spanish and French wine. Yes. And Chilean wine, I think is very beautiful, but of course, 
nobody takes much notice of it. I do. Uh, until <laughs> you discover it. Yes, that's mm. right. And when you go to the vineyards and do tastings, you really realize yeah. that it's a very, very serious contender, delicious. The reds are beautiful. Mm. Yes. And, uh, you know, the, that's the other thing too, is I, I love my wines and I know quite a bit about wine. So yep. um, I'll, I'm sure I'll enjoy uh, helping people with that as well. Mm. Of course. Yeah. And so you also get at the Antarctica, of course, that sailed by that yes. we were discussing just and, now. And down, listen, the Chilean fjords. Yes. I mean, I've been down there a couple of times and they're just absolutely stunning. Mm. I was going to ask you about that. How would they compare with some something like the New Zealand fjords or indeed the Norwegian, the fjords. Norwegian yeah. fjords? Very similar. Mm. Yeah. yeah very so spectacular similar. scenery. Mm. Yeah. Um, spectacular scenery, sort of um, different topography, mm. um, see different wildlife. So yeah, it's it's same same but different. Yeah. And then there's a lot of glaciers, oh, uh, okay. as well down through there. Yeah, yeah, it's it's stunning down through there. And then into uh, Punta Arenas, yes, um, which is another. Um, actually, I had best um, hot chocolate I've ever had in the world there. Really? really? Yeah, yeah. I've still got the name of the shop, so we're going to go there. Take Excellent. the people there if they want to go. Mm, interesting. <clears throat> well, and then it will be your second trip back to the Falklands. It will be. <laughs> yeah. Well, then I think you'd be able to pick up your tips from... I will. Yeah, I won't exactly. tell you his name, but yes, yeah. one, of our, one of our people. Yeah. Yes, it's extraordinary. I think the Falklands is described as being like an English village. Yes. Um, mm. Because, of course, as we always all remember, yes. there was that famous war between 1982. 1982. Yep. Um, and, and I think that was the time when even people in Britain realised that there was a Falklands and it was <laughs> part of the British <laughs> part of the British Empire. Well, they seconded the uh, QE2. That's right. That's yeah. And the QE2 yeah. could... Could sail at thirty-two knots, mm. and um, so the, the, none of the wow. naval, yeah, none of the naval, you could water, knots. yeah, you could water ski behind it. it mm. That that thing <laughs> could sit on twenty-eight knots all day. My gosh, it was fast, mm. yeah. and uh, yeah, n none of the naval boats could keep up with it. That's absolutely amazing. <laughs> anyway, it's a bit of trivia for you. <laughs> now, the third itinerary. Something is, completely different. Some, yeah, I mean, this is the one I think that um, I'm particularly interested in, is a Namibian Nights and Bayside Beauty. So that's departing Cape Town, round trip, on the 6th of December 2024. Uh, 15 night also on the Splendor. So tell us a little bit about that itinerary. Well, I picked a good ship. So. You did. <laughs> you did. I'm like, yeah. I, I think I might just follow you around I'm for the next couple of years, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll I tell you why I picked um i i picked this itinerary it mm. is because i've i've been to um south africa mm. probably 15 or 16 times mm. and i worked out i've done over 200 game drives wow and so i you know i've been through south africa kenya i've been mm. through namibia all those places yeah. so i'm very familiar with the with the place um and if i was probably 20 years younger and single, I'd probably move to Cape Town. Really? Mm. What's awesome. the attraction yeah. of it? Uh, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's just a beautiful town surrounded mm. by, you know, Table Mountain. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, I just like it. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's extremely good value. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think at the moment the rand's about 12 against our dollar. So you could go to a, a really, wow. really nice yeah. restaurant mm. that might cost you $300 in Sydney for probably 70 or $80 with a bottle of wine. Yeah. Um, and the wine's so not bad either. The wine's yeah. is stunning. So, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I picked that itinerary because – it's uh, it's Cape Town return, but does Namibia? Yes. Yeah, overnights there, mm. um, which is just a contrast mm. place. Yeah. It's a bit like the Atacama Desert, really. It is, is. just yeah. bar barren. There's nothing there, but, but you see different wildlife. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So so that that's unique. Mm. And then I, I picked it because it actually goes only goes up the west coast a little bit, mm. um, and then comes back again. Yeah. And then goes up the East Coast yeah. um, to some great places. And I've been to most of those places as well. Yeah. And if there's any golfers on the trip, well, I can organize <laughs> some golf uh, Excellent, yes. for them as well. What and was same your in handicap Cape Town. To get, handicap again? Six. Oh, right. <laughs> so, guys, you all have to beat Brett then. Yep. <laughs> but, but, but Africa is a place, you know, you, you have to go to at least once in your lifetime. Yeah. And the wildlife you see on this tour? Yeah. Well, it's uh, there's a three night tour included as well. Mm. Yep. And then if. Um, if we want, which I probably will do, um, put a a, a pre-tour together, um, an extended tour mm. um, to, to do some other things as well. Yep. What are you thinking of doing? Well, we might charter a little private jet. <gasps> uh, oh, 
and uh, fly some people uh, maybe up to Sabi or something. And we've I've done that yeah. uh, quite a few times mm. with the the companies I had. We've chartered uh, Dornier thirty two, so you can put thirty two people on it quite easily. I'm um, speaking of private jets. You yes. had a private jet rescue story that you needed to tell me as well. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, <laughs> that was um, that was actually in South America. Our Latitude brand had a, um, a tour called. It was actually our first South American Latitude tour. Mm. And it was called Deserts and Glaciers. And it started in, uh, well, Santiago, then Mm. up to um, Atacama Desert. Yeah. Which is, you know, the driest place on the planet. Yes. And uh, we spent four nights up there. And uh, we stayed at this beautiful lodge and did all different things out to the Andes Mountains and mm. hot springs. And it, it's, it's it's a bit like Easter Island. Like, what would you go there for? Yeah. But yeah. once you go there, it's you know. quite intriguing. Mm. Anyway, we were um, we were flying. the ne- um, When we were leaving, we were flying uh, from, from Atacama, 2,500 kilometers to the bottom of Chile, um, down to Punta Arenas mm. to get on a cruise to do the Chilean fjords. Yeah. And then we were coming back and staying in Patagonia at the uh, Explorer Lodge. Mm. So we had a sort of tight itinerary. And um, so we rang at like four o'clock in the morning, the airline airport, make sure it's all on time because we had a, like a nine o'clock flight mm. yep. and it was an hour and a half drive. We get there and in between us ringing, leaving, getting to the airport, oh, they've thrown a, a, a baggage strike. <laughs> And so there's no, there's no departures. And, um, so how are we going to get from here to the other end of Chile? Right. And the, of course, most of the baggage people can't speak English. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, so I said to everybody, look, just, you know, sit down, I'll, I'll see what I can do. So I rang back to my assistant at the time mm. and, um, she, she went home and, uh, oh, she went to work, sorry. And, uh, so it was like eight o'clock at mm. night in, in Sydney, and we went through every possible scenario <laughs> to get to fly people, even to, over across from up to Lima, over yeah. to, over to Buenos Find Aires, not on strike. so yeah. to get to get yeah. the planes, yeah. nothing, I couldn't get anything, and um, so and then I thought, well, tomorrow I've actually got lunch in Punta Arenas with the lady that um, works for the air charter company because oh. we were going to charter a jet in um, South America. And uh, so I rang her and I said, oh, you know, it's – I said, oh, Britt, oh, yeah. She said, are you ringing to confirm lunch tomorrow? <laughs> Not And I quite. said, well, I am, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> hopefully. Um, but I've got a bit of a problem. <laughs> I, I'm in San Pedro and there's oh, a strike no. and uh, we can't – I need mm. to get to Punta Arenas like tonight and um, – so I need to charter a plane. Mm. So she said, all right, well, leave it with me. So she rings back and um, she said, look, I found a 737. There was Whoa. only, there was only 26 of us. <laughs> oh, she said, I found a 737, a mining, one they use for the mining, fly mm. in, fly out. It's in Santiago. We can get it to San Pedro mm. at 8.30 tonight. This is <gasps> at like 10.30 in the morning. Yep. Uh, I said, okay, so uh, how much is that going to cost? She said, well, it's going to cost 120000 US dollars. Oh, that's a bit painful. Um, I said, all right. So um, I went, I said, I'll ring you back. So I go over <laughs> to the group and I say, okay, here's, here's the scenario. The good news. We go back to, um, mm. there's no options. We go back to uh, the lodge and we wait. We can get some people in and uh, like twos out, but it's going to yeah. take a week. We're basically going to have to cancel the trip. Yeah. yeah. Claim it on travel insurance. Or um, <laughs> I can charter a plane, um, and this is how much it's going to cost. We'll pay half. Yeah. You pay half. Okay. Yeah. And you can claim it on travel insurance. Yep. And it'll all be, you know, everything will be on time. So they all just went, yeah, let's do it. Right? <laughs> so I hope she paid for lunch the next day, yes. though. <laughs> so so I rang her back and um, – I said, well, okay, we want to do it, but I got, I got one question. She says, what's that? I said, do you take American Express? <laughs> <laughs> she said, uh, yeah. I said, okay. So um, I rang American Express and said, I'm going to put you know, 120,000 US on my credit card. They went, yep, okay. That's um, a lot of points you'd be getting on. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I guess, uh, anyway, so we, uh, so the plane turns up eventually. It's like 8.30 comes, 9 o'clock comes. No plane. Oh gosh, no. I know. I'm sweating bullets. You know, I'm standing. Well, also because your credit card would have been yeah, charged exactly. as yeah. well. So right. Yeah. So right. And uh, anyway, so the plane eventually turns up. We all got on. They had, you know, champagne. It was all oh. business class. Everyone laid down, had a sleep. We arrived. We arrived at the airport at three o'clock in the morning. 
They opened the airport for oh, us, wow. had a coach waiting outside, took us to the airport and I took us to the hotel and I, mm. you know, let the hotel know that staff were waiting at the hotel, gave everyone their room keys, worry about check-in tomorrow. Yeah. And, uh, everybody woke up the next day, Fresh just like the... nothing had happened. <laughs> and so we got on the, we got on the ship. There's only 120 people on, uh, for four nights. Yeah. And of course, all any of our clients could talk about was the the private jet. Of course, and naturally. So, by the, so we got to be known as the private jet people. <laughs> and uh, and we actually, when when the um, we were coming back into Punta Arenas and uh, I met a lady mm. and she said, oh, are you the host um, for that group? I said, well, in fact, I actually own the company mm. and organised the private jet. Well, that lady became Latitude's best client. Oh, Is bless that right? her. And yes. she went on every tour. Fantastic. Because she felt safe, you know, yeah, that, yeah. or she felt like if there was a problem, you could probably sort it out. Yeah. yeah. What a great story. Well, at least <laughs> I can <laughs> totally understand. We never why. made any money that year, but, <laughs> but we, we least... won a lot of clients. <laughs> I can but totally at... understand why Bob Hawke thought you were the fixer. <laughs> but at least with the South Africa, Africa tour, the private jet will already be pre-organized. <laughs> So you've really given us a, a mm. picture of what traveling with Brett Dudley is mm. like and why it's very different. Thanks, Peter. So yeah. I can totally understand it. <laughs> Should we just perhaps... It's only a snapshot. But... <laughs> <laughs> I could sit here all day and tell you stories. Well, we may well take you up on that. <laughs> so should we just recap? So, sure. um, so there are three trips on offer. In fact, now mm. four because an additional one. There's um, the Antarctic Peninsula Discovery Tour, which mm -hmm. is 24 nights. And twenty seven thousand six hundred and ten dollars. There is that's in uh, and that's in uh, January next year. In yes. January next year. Yeah. yeah. And there's the South America and Great White Continent tour, nineteen nights for twenty one thousand eight hundred and twenty. Uh, and that's departs in February twenty twenty five. And then you the... are going to be busy. Yeah, and actually we're on there for Valentine's Day. Excellent. Oh, that will are be you bringing lovely. Your wife? Yes. Oh, good. I yeah, was she, about she's to say. um, she, <laughs> she's what are actually you fixing for that. She's <laughs> actually um, you know, been on uh, quite a lot of the mm. ones that we've hosted. So yep. she's she's very good with people, and yeah. she actually sometimes organises. If I organise, like if for instance, organise, I'd take guys to play golf. Mm. She organised to take ladies on a shopping tour, a luxury shopping tour. And Wait a second. So your team. wife, I reckon, was the one that actually fixed the beer she for got Bob the Hawk. Plane. Then <laughs> she, uh, the she definitely wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and so then the third trip is the Namibian Nights and Bayside Beauty. Um, and Brett, you were saying that with the seventeen thousand four hundred dollars per person for the deluxe veranda suite, that also includes the land programs. The three night land, mm. the th three night Regent Land. Program. Program. Yeah. Yes. Which is fantastic. I mean, yeah. it's fantastic value. Um, and that departs, that's a 15 night Cape Town round trip voyage departing on the 6th of December, 2024. And that also has some fantastic shore excursions. Included. It does. And mm. it's, um, like I said, the East, the East coast, uh, that part, which is basically the garden route, mm. uh, oh, lovely. up there is, is, and it's a great way to get in, obviously quite safe. Uh, yeah. You're on the ship, obviously. Um, and then the shore excursions, you know, the days will be mm. quite secure and things. But you're also with Brett. So, That's right. Know, yeah. You're feeling been, really safe. been to all those places. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so if you're keen to check out the full itineraries, all the additional amenities are included and prices. You can check it out at rssc.com or contact your travel advisor or the Regent, Regent Reservations team on 1300 455 200. So you can look for more Regent 7 Seas cruises at cruisepassenger.com.au and sign up for our weekly newsletter to keep in touch with the world of cruising. And the next edition of Cruise and Travel magazine, our gorgeous print product, is out at selected newsagents or subscribe at cruisepassenger.com.au forward slash magazine. Now, Brett, thank you so much for joining us oh, today. My pleasure. On the it's, it's, I really it's enjoyed been it. fabulous. I always yeah. enjoy talking about travel. I know, but we should get <laughs> you on for another one. We to will just have hear you back on. We want to hear more stories. Yeah. Oh, I've got lots of them. <laughs> Thanks again, Brett. My thank pleasure. You, Brett. Thank you.